Welcome to Airgun Action. Now in this week's episode, I'm going to be taking a look at this awesome airgun. It's the FX Pantera. But before that, we're going old school and targeting rats after dark with a lamp and a spring-powered airgun. Right, I'm out on the farm and it's still pretty busy here, so apologies if you can hear any machinery in the background. Um, what I'm going to do once the light's gone is target rats, but I'm going to do it a bit differently from usual because for the majority of my after dark ratting, I tend to use high tech kit, but I just want to prove that it can be done in a simpler and more affordable way. Now, the gun that I'm going to be using tonight is the Winchester Model 45 RS from Just Air Guns. I reviewed it a few weeks ago and you can pick this air gun up, it's, it's, a, it's a brake barrel springer and you can pick it up for about £200 which makes it a very affordable option. So I've paired the gun with a fairly modest scope and although generally for ratting I tend to use digital optics, I'm actually going to be using a lamp tonight and you can pick up a suitable lamp for under £100. Now, I'm actually using a Wicked Light from Scott Country, which is a slightly more sophisticated lamp, but it has got a few advantages. Uh, one of them being that you can actually switch it to infrared, should you wish to switch over to a digital infrared scope at a later date. Points to consider when you're lamping, and particularly when you're choosing a lamp to buy. First thing is do try to make sure that it's got an angle adjustable mount because that enables you to ensure that the beam from your light is correctly aligned with your, your line of sight. So it fills your sight picture and illuminates where you're looking through the scope. Secondly, try to get a lamp that has a power adjustable beam so you can adjust its output. Now a lot of people bang on about how powerful their torch or lamp is, which is all very well, but it's really handy to be able to wind it down because rats can be quite, uh, quite spooked by a powerful beam but tend to be more confident if you have it set more soft so being able to wind it right down is certainly an advantage. Now this lamp does actually have a red beam which takes some of the edge off of it but in all honesty you're not going to see that when we're up and running because Nikki's going to be filming with infrared cameras so it's going to be a monochrome image. Um, now, I'm not going to pretend that you're likely to shoot as much with lamping kit as you are with a digital scope because when you're using infrared or thermal you obviously haven't got that beam that the rats are going to learn to fear and it's ultimately going to spook them. But this is the sort of kit that I always used to use back in the day and we used to shoot plenty of rats with it. Um, also I've not shot this farm for a couple of weeks. The rats haven't had any shooting pressure with lamping tactics, so I'm expecting that there'll be a few about and they hopefully will be quite bold. Now I've also gone to the trouble of putting down a few bait heaps in the shape of breadcrumbs, just hopefully help to hold those rats still while I'm taking shots. So that's what we're planning to do. We just need the light to dip for it to turn properly dark and we can crack on with it. One under the trailer to kick us off there. That wasn't on wasn't on one of my bait spots, but quite frankly, I'm not complaining. Now it is freezing cold tonight, but you'll probably notice that I haven't got a glove on my right hand, and the reason for that is for reloading, it saves me from having to put on my headlamp with a glove off. I can just about feel what I'm doing and load the gun back up. Now 
anyway, that one was having a right munch on one of the bait spots. Now, I often use much smellier baits than breadcrumbs, but that was doing the trick then. The key thing to remember when you are using baits to try and hold rats still is that either they're very fine particles or liquid, because what you don't want is large chunks or pellets that the rats can just grab and run off with. Another one there from the same spot. But I've got to say that one looked like it was actually a lot more interested in its dead mate than the bait that I'd put out. Now you probably notice that I am switching off the lamp after I'm taking shots and that's for a couple of reasons. First, it's so cold tonight that I am concerned that the battery's gonna drain more quickly than usual, but also because I want there to be periods with, with no light. I mean, there's a little bit of light from the yard skimming me, but with this lamp off, it's just a bit of stealthy time. The beam isn't swinging around out in the yard, and my intention is that while I'm sat here in the darkness, the rats are gonna venture out, hopefully settle, and then I'll pop the beam on, all being well, bag some more. Another one on a bait spot there. Um, I've got to say, it is a little bit slower than I'd expected it to be. It's a lot colder than I'd expected it to be, but at least we're getting a few shots. Well, another one from the bank behind the trailer there. Um, it was a really long wait for that one. It's very slow here, and I don't, I don't really feel like we're going to get a lot more action now. So, not going to reload just yet. I'm going to up sticks. We'll move on to a spot from where I'm hoping we'll be able to cover the grain store, which I would imagine is going to be getting some attention from the rats, and we'll give it a try there because I'm not quite ready to head for home yet.
is very encouraging. There was one out on the grain there pretty quickly after we arrived, um, which is always encouraging because it makes a bit of noise moving, moving the kit into another barn. Um, although I've got to say, I'm not entirely surprised because there is a heck of a lot of grub at the other end of this barn for them. So we'll give it a bit longer and see what happens. Another longish wait then, but it's another rat accounted for. And that is what we're here for tonight. Well, it's been a long time since that last one, so I'm going to call it a night. Um, it has been quieter than I'd expected, but I hope that I have managed to show you that conventional, what many people would regard as old-fashioned lamping tactics, still can do the job when it comes to ratting after dark. And also, as I said at the outset, I've used a fairly simple gun too, a brake barrel springer. Now, I don't do a lot of shooting with recoiling air guns and I think the really important message is to just know your limitations and shoot within those limitations. I have made sure that I've had the luxury of a seat so I'm taking stable sitting shots and also I'm really not pushing my ranges. The longest shot I've taken tonight has probably been, I don't know, about 18 metres. Now this is a 177 calibre gun, I'm using BSA Blackstar hollow point pellets and by not being too ambitious and keeping these shots fairly short, you can see I've been getting pretty clean kills. Now, as I've already said, it is very, very cold. So once I've got these rats picked up, I'm looking forward to getting home and warming up in front of the fire with a hot drink. So there you go, lamping tactics can still bring the rats to book after dark. Next up, let's take a closer look at the FX Pantera. After 20 years of reviewing air guns, I can sometimes start to take new innovations just a little bit for granted. This air gun though has genuinely surprised and impressed me with just how far it has managed to refine the overall shooting experience and the potential to tweak and modify. It's the new Pantera from FX and you can expect to pay in the ballpark of £1,900 for it depending on which model you go for. Most of you can probably see straight away that this gun has been designed primarily for target shooting. Now, more specifically, shooting along the lines of precision rifle and tackling targets at extreme range. Now, that's evident through the barricade stock that runs along the fore end, um, and that incorporates a bridge over the shroud and an arca rail running along its underside. Now that arrangement facilitates the attachment of weights to refine balance as well as other accessories. Moving back along the stock, a vertical pistol grip is supplied as standard. Now vertical grips are very much in vogue at the moment and I really like this one. It's nicely contoured, has a decent swell and it's stippled rubberized finish feels brilliant in the hand. Now the stock configuration may look simplistic,
but it actually manages to incorporate a heck of a lot of adjustability and that is before you start adding accessories. Now the cheek support which can be switched over to the opposite side for left-handers can be adjusted up and down as can the butt pad. Now there's further provision for accessory attachment under the butt section and if you slacken off the screws on the butt pad that can be extended outwards and inwards uh, to adjust length of pull and also to adjust its vertical angle for a really refined fit. Now this air gun's proportions are something of a variable feast. Now that's partly because of all that adjustability but also because it comes in 500, 600 and 700 millimeter barrel options. Now this is the shorter 500 millimeter version and its overall length varies between 98 and 101 centimeters depending on how you have that butt section set. Now it does look like a fairly substantial air gun but this, act, uh, this version actually tips the scales at a pretty modest 3.4 kilos. The Pantera comes equipped with FX's famous superior smooth twist X barrel and you get the heavy version with the 600 and 700 millimeter models. Now caliber options include 177, 22, 0.25 and 0.30. You can see that the barrel is shrouded. Now that provides some sound suppression, but it is also threaded to accept an additional silencer. Now, one of the most innovative things about the Pantera is the fact that its plenum is actually positioned around the barrel at the rear section of the shroud. As I've come to expect from FX, the finish and engineering on this air gun look flawless. Now that the build quality really is remarkable. Now the Pantera is equipped with a Picatinny scope rail um, which has 20 MOA built into it. Now it actually straddles the magazine and that is worth noting because you need to make sure that if you use this particular mag your scope mounts are high enough to keep the scope out of the way of it. Now the slots are actually numbered and that makes life so much easier to return a scope to exactly the right place if you're switching between different optics. The magazine I've just referred to will no doubt look familiar to some of you. The important thing is that it's kind to ammo and very reliable and its dimensions have also been tweaked so that it can accommodate longer slugs. Now this gun is 2.2 caliber and the magazine holds 18 pellets or slugs. Uh, reloading it is simply a matter of removing the clear face plate, turning the inner drum anti-clockwise until it stops. You then drop a pellet nose first into the first chamber to hold it under spring tension. Now then it's simply a matter of loading all of the other bays until it's full. You return the clear face, pa uh, face plate snap its retainer back into the locked position, the mag is then ready to pop into the gun and you're ready to start shooting. The magazine is driven by a really good side lever action. Now the lever is well positioned for intuitive use and like the cheek support it can be swapped over to the opposite side for left handers. Now I really like the large drop down handle and the mechanism is brilliant. It's very smooth, very quick and extremely reliable. It really doesn't miss a beat. I say it all the time but no matter how good an air gun is, its trigger can make or break it and the two stage fully adjustable unit on the Pantera is absolutely sublime. The match type blade feels great and it's adjustable up and down, in and out and also for angle. Now this one has been set up absolutely perfectly in the factory. The first stage take up feels just right, it comes to a really clear stop and the second stage break is pretty short but really crisp and with absolutely no creep. The familiar FX safety switch is conveniently positioned 
just above the trigger blade. Now it's safe when it's in the horizontal position and you simply thumb it down to flick the pointer up to the fire position when you're ready to take a shot. The Pantera is equipped with a new dynamic block which features a one-piece short impulse valve which has been designed for very precise airflow, even at extreme power levels. Now, apart from that and that special plenum, this gun also has an AMP Mark II regulator uh, and regular regulator pressure can be externally adjusted on the high power models. Now that's displayed on the top of the two gauges which are angled backwards to make them easier to read while you're shooting. Other adjustments to power output can be made via FX's Quick Tune system. Now that has macro and micro power adjusters that enables you to tweak output to perfectly suit your ammo without having to use tools. Now, high power versions of this gun are capable of hurling 40 grain slugs at up to 1,000 feet per second. Now, this particular gun doesn't feature the whole suite of power adjustability because it's a sub 12 foot pound model. Power output on the Pantera is remarkably consistent. Now this one is within four feet per second over a string of 10 shots, and that's with pellets taken straight from the tin. Um, now the Pantera's shot count is pretty difficult to pin down because of all those permutations between caliber, barrel length, and power output. But I'm running this one at 11.1 .1 foot pounds, and it's good for about 200 shots from a full 250 bar fill. Now, you can see that the 300cc carbon bottle is unusually positioned towards the rear of the gun and its fill pressure is displayed on the lower of those two neat dials. Now, once it does need to be topped back up, it's simply a matter of coupling up to the foster connector that's positioned by the neck of the bottle. So, that's a quick run through the FX Pantera's main features. Let's get out on the range and put some shots through it. Well, as you can see, the Pantera is a pretty accurate shooter. Um, shooting here very quickly, 30 meters, it's practically pellet on pellet, and it is capable of much, much more. Um, and of course, this is an air gun that's been designed to topple targets at 100 meters and way beyond with the high power models. Now, pretty much everybody knows that FX barrels are very accurate. But if you factor in really consistent power delivery and a, a really crisp trigger, then you can just see what the potential of this air gun could be. I mean, in short, the Pantera is the sort of air gun that makes challenging shots about as easy as they can be. So that is the FX Pantera in its sub 12 foot pan, guys. Now, it really is a phenomenal air gun and it certainly raised the bar by several notches. Now, yes, it is expensive, but if you get the chance to shoot one, I think you'll agree with me that it has just taken that refinement beyond what most of us regard as the standard at this price point. And yes, it is an air gun that's been designed primarily for long range slug work, but this one certainly cuts it with pellets. And I've got to say, I've already taken it out hunting. It's performed very, very well in the field, and we'll share that one with you in a future episode very soon. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for in this week's episode, but we'll be back with much, much more in two weeks' time. Thank you for watching, and enjoy your shooting, and stay safe. And if you want to see more airgun hunting and reviews, check out Airgunner and Airgun World magazines.